The acoustic guitars I recorded in this room for my new song sounded like this. But after mixing them in the mixing session, they sound like this. So straight out of the recording, that guitar sounds a bit thin and boomy, but after the mixing, it sounds more solid and it fills up the song, it kind of dominantly takes charge as the main instrument, which it should do because it's an acoustic guitar song, it is the main instrument. So how did I make it sound more steady and full? Well, I duplicated that guitar a bunch of times and send them through different mixer tracks and make them do different things and therefore have different character and, and sound differently. But at the end, I send them all through one mixer track and let them all share one space and act like a one single guitar. And that way it sounded more solid and full. And so in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that and you'll get to see the method and the, the plugins that I used to do it. All right, let's get to it. So there are two acoustic guitars, one playing throughout the entire song and the other one is a strumming guitar that only comes up around the chorus and towards the ending of the song. Now that second guitar is pretty much ready to go into the mixing session but the first one, um, I need to do some pre-mixing preparation for that guitar and yes it is a part of the mixing but not really with plugins and stuff but rather more mechanical preparations that I had to do to that guitar to get it ready the mixing. So as you already heard before, that first guitar is a pluck and slap style performance and the first thing I want to do is separate that slap part of it from the rest of the guitar because I don't want that slap to be affected by any of the mixing treatments that I do to the rest of the guitar, especially stuff like reverb. I want that slap to be kind of dry and in your face. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do now is create a duplicate of that original track and put it right next to it and start cutting them both exactly where that slap is all the way throughout the, the track. I chop it up exactly where those slaps are. Okay, so once everything is cut, I'm going to delete here everything but the slap. And then I do exactly the opposite on the first track. Just remove the slap. Also, if you if there was any part where you want to like redecide, um, just move it. If you, if you cut too much or something, if you move something like this, you want to move the other clip all the way to that starting point. That way, you can avoid having any um, any clicks and pops. And then I would want to listen to it, um, listen to it throughout the, the, the entire track all the way to the end just to make sure that there are no clicks and pops and some weirdness going on. Now I can surely work with it like that on the, on the file but because there are too many tiny little, little clips all over the place there is a chance of me accidentally deleting one or moving uh, one of those then it will be out of sync and to avoid all those things happening I'm going to export those out as separate wave files so I'll have the slap and the plug separately on two different tracks I think a little bird just tried to do a 9-11 on my window. So I would like to tell you that the bird was unharmed, uh, but I can't because I have no idea what happened to it. Just went outside to have a look and uh, it's not there so I'm hoping it was fine and just flew away. Alright, let's get back to work. So the first thing I want to sort out is this slap. 
it is the rhythm of this song. I want that slap to be quite steady and solid. That's why I'm keeping it dry and separate it from the rest of the performance. Now, as you can see, it's quite dynamic. Um, it's very loud at some parts. It's quite uneven. It has quite a bit of a dynamic range. Now, I can throw in a, a compressor to sort this out, to even that out a little bit. But before I do that, I want to actually um, layer some samples on that, just like you would do with a snare drum sometimes, um, just to help this out even more because, you know, having this solid is quite important for the song. So I'm not going to replace this because this is the, the original slap of that performance. If I replace that, it's not going to be uh, quite as natural and authentic. So I'm just going to layer some more uh, slap sample on top of this to, to support it a little bit more, to make it stronger. So what I've done is I've recorded just uh, some, some slap samples just using my same guitar, same microphone, same settings, same uh, place in the room where I recorded the original guitar. So that way it's it's it has that natural character in it. Um, so if it was a, a live performance, having these slaps very different at each point of the song being dynamic like that it's fine because it's natural it's you know live performance is more about that living moment but a studio version of a song a recorded version of a song should be a bit more steady throughout the way so here I have that clip of additional slaps that I recorded to use as samples um, I go through it and and get the best ones cut out so I just look through it and get the best ones uh, that I need. Now I can't use one or two samples, that's not enough. I need to, uh, it has to be more random. So I need to have at least 10 15 samples, randomly distribute them throughout the, the track. The main thing is placing it exactly on, on the point, it has to be exactly on top of that original slap. It cannot sound like two different slaps playing simultaneously, so they have to be aligned really well. Um, the point of this additional slap is to not sound like uh, an additional slap, but rather reinforce the energy of the original slap. So once I have it all distributed throughout the track like this, um, I'm also going to export that out as a single track. Alright, so now I have a couple of tracks, the original guitar recording, and I have the one with just the slap and one with just the pluck. And I have also this one track of sample slaps that are recorded using the same guitar, same microphone, same room, same spot. So those four tracks are ready and that's pretty much the, the mechanical work of the mixing I was talking about. Now let's jump into the actual mixing session and see how I use those four tracks and use further duplicates of some of those tracks to make this solid full sounding guitar. Okay so this is my mixing session, I have my mixer and I have, I'm bringing my playlist here uh, this is the entire song, um, so it's got quite a lot going on even though it's, it's just simple acoustic guitar. At the bottom you see some, some shakers and stuff going on, there are strings as MIDI, still in MIDI uh, banks. Um, and then I have my vocal section here, background vocals and stuff like that. And this is the second guitar and yeah, starting with the bass track over here and then uh, let me just add so one here. Let's just add some distance between these things so we can see what is going on. Okay, so add a gap in between things. So, okay. So right here, this is the guitar area. This is the second guitar. Make it a little smaller. Okay, this is just that second guitar. Um, and then this is the main guitar. Like I said, it's been divided into multiple tracks. So we're going to have a look at each one and how it goes through each each mixer track here and what it does together, okay? So starting with, well, this, this one here, these little bits, I'll explain that in a minute. But we start with this one. This is the main one and it's the main pluck. There is no slap in that because we extracted that slap out, remember? So... This is that slap that belongs to this guitar. We'll see what happened to that slap later on. But the first thing here, the first track here, 
It sounds pretty much, it sounds natural, just like how we had it just after the recording, right? That's because the main guitar track here is also the guitar bass, because all these additional guitars, they all go through that one. And that track only contains this one plugin, and it's an EQ. All it does is cut out the low end, it's a high pass filter, and also some of the mid lows. So let's see without it. Boomy with the with the bass the bass notes. So this filter sort out that that low end that which we don't need because there is a bass guitar. Okay, so that's what happens on that track. Let's see the next one. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's a copy of that track and it's going through this mix track right here, which is then bust into that main guitar track. So what happens in there is first it goes through this filter and that has even more low end removed from it. And then it goes through this, this J37 tape machine. Okay, so the next track is this one here. And that's called Main Guitar in Solo. What that means, um, as you can see, it has an automation clip controlling the volume level. So what it does is this guitar has been controlled um, against the vocals because this guitar and the vocals, they're the main two elements of the song. Whenever the vocals come in, the guitar gets taken down a little bit and in between it just pokes out again, okay? So let's listen to it. Okay, it's very saturated. It's going through this track here that's called Guitar in Solo. See what happens there. I have this EQ, what it does basically is um, it's pushing up the high end and removing a little bit of that low end and um, I use that one because I like the, the the color of it. I like the I like the it adds a little bit of um, uh, flavor to that guitar track. I like the sound of it. So the next one is this guitar. Now this is the very first time I add a little bit of reverb to these guitars. Most of the guitar actually don't have any reverb in this song, but um, here I have a little bit of a reverb. I have delay and the, and the stereo widening disabled. And all it does is some compression and uh, and some reverb here. So that's that. And then it goes through, this is the, the thing that actually makes um, the difference in the guitar. This is the, the Abbey Road Saturator and I'm using a mono version of it. And uh, what it does, it adds a lot of uh, um, analog distortion to that guitar, which, is, which sounds very nice. Now, I'm only using a tiny bit of that. Um, about 30% um, so if I crank that up you will hear the, the difference as you can see the, the volume level the mix level of that is very low so what's coming into my main mix from this track is is only a little bit of um, of signal otherwise it will just take the life out of this natural acoustic sound so finally I have some EQ happening um, I'm just I'm just uh, removing a little bit of that mid and uh, and the low end. That's that's it. Okay, so next we have this track here. This is the original slap that we extracted out of our original performance, and it goes through this track here. That that's the original slap, and I'm doing some EQ here. I'm boosting uh, uh, some low mids there while taking out the entire low end. And I have this compressor doing some very subtle compression. And then I have this reverb. This is the FL Studio stock reverb. Again, very tiny bit. I said earlier on, I don't want to have any reverb in, in, the, in the slab. Um, but this is just a very subtle uh, reverb. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the dry signal is all the way up to 100% and the, 
the, the wet level is 30%, so it's very little. And it's, it's, a, it's a small room setting I'm using. Then we have this slap sample track, which we created. And that's going through this track here, and it's very dry and in your face, no reverb, nothing like that. So what happens in here? I have this um, high pass filter just to cut out the low end. And then I have this compressor doing some subtle compression with a ratio of two to one to control the dynamics further. Okay, so that's it for the main guitar. So if I just turn them all on and we listen to it together. Oh yeah, finally, I forgot. Finally, this one here, this is just a guitar. There's a part in this song where the slap stops and, and there's like a little finger start going on. And I wanted to emphasize that a little bit more because the vocals are present in that area. I wanted that, that run to cut through a little bit more. So I added an extra track. So it's just basically increasing the volume of that, that bit. So if you hear it without it. I forget everything around. So, um, okay, so that's that. That's it for the first guitar. And then I have this, this other guitar, the second guitar, the strumming guitar. And what I'm doing to that is it's going through this track here. I'm doing some, um, some EQing here, taking out some rumbly sound uh, around this area, around 500, 600, and then uh, cutting out the low end and boosting the highs a little bit. And also putting it through the J37 again. So if you listen to it raw, And this is with and together with the other guitars. So if I turn on everything now. So this is where that, that um, vocal control, the volume control of the saturated guitar is really helping. When, uh, when the vocals and the background vocals are gone right after the chorus, it sounds a little empty. So I can push up this guitar. Okay. Same way, you can uh, do some controls throughout the song. Turning on each other, they fall apart, broken up. But if you let me, we can drain out the pain around us and find love again. And it gets a little hard to find. We stop and redesign. Never get left behind. We get back on the line. Living in a world. Okay, so not only it sounds more clearer and, and full, but it also translates better across more systems. And that's one of the things I experimented on when I was trying this out. Um, I tested this on different speakers, um, not just my reference monitors here, but headphones, earphones, crappy phone speakers, and my um, car speakers, little, little Bluetooth speakers. I tried it on my home cinema system speakers. 
see that original recording of the guitar where you might think hey that sounds still somehow acoustically more natural it does but it doesn't translate the same way across more systems because it's still it's right out of the recordings um, on my home cinema system that guitar sounded way too muddy somehow but the mix down here sounds somewhat equal across all those systems that I tried it on and that's one of the things that you want out of your mixing session you want your stuff to sound good across more systems so that's it that's how I mix my acoustic guitars in my new song find love again thank you so much for watching I hope it was helpful and in the next video I'll be showing you how I did my vocal mixing on that same song I'll see you then